You're all set, Bob. Okay, well, thanks everyone. Uh, it's our first meeting of the new year. Um, and it looks like we've got three projects. So what we wanna do, and most of you know the drill, is we'll introduce ourselves, and then you can introduce your team that's gonna make the presentation. Um, then you'll have about 15 minutes to do that. Then we'll have a, a staff report, a question and answer period, and then we'll uh, make our final comments. So uh, I'm Bob Gorman. I'm the uh, chairman of the design advisory panel. And we've got Fred. Hi, I'm uh, Fred Marino. I'm an architect. Larry. Hi, everyone. I'm Larry Quark, and I'm a landscape architect. And Vivian. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Vivian Stone, and I am an architect. Okay, um, why don't you go ahead and introduce the panel or your presenters for the first project? Sure. Cedar Overlook is the first project. So the, my name is Rob Vogel, um, project civil engineer for the Cedar Overlook project. Um, with us uh, today is Dan Ebersall. He is representing the development side of the project. Um, this project is, um, is, is basically conceptual at this point. There's no builder associated with the project. Um, the imagery we've provided is uh, from other uh, various builders. And um, so we do not have a project architect associated with this. So it'll just be us, um, myself presenting. And um, Mr. Ebersall will be available also for any questions or comments. And, and Rob, uh, I'm Dan Ebersall. Hello. I also have with me Brian Lyburn from uh, the development group. He's the uh, head of vertical construction for us. Are we, should we get started, uh, Bob? Yes. Wonderful. I'm going to share screen. Is that visible? Um, not yet. There it is. So this project is um, the title Cedar Overlook, obviously located um, on Cedar Lane, Howard County. This is on, would be the east side of uh, Cedar Lane. It is a proposed 35 unit age restricted community. The property is zoned R20, which is a residential um, single family detached zoning as part of the request for a conditional use, we are required to present uh, to the design advisory panel. And uh, hence, that is why we are here today. Um, let's see if I can. So the, this is um, Cedar Lane. Uh, this is the proposed site. Across from our site is a public road called Brayburn Road, which is located at this location. Um, at the intersection of Freetown Road and Cedar Lane is the Hickory Ridge Shopping Center at this location. Um, in, in addition to the various uh, retail uh, components of the shopping center, uh, to the rear is also a uh, Sunrise Assisted Living Facility. And there's some uh, age restricted housing on the other side of, of Freetown Road. Uh, at Freetown Road and Cedar Lane is Lorian Harmony Hall. And north of that is uh, uh, another age restricted community called um, uh, Glen's, uh, Scott's Glen. Uh, south on Cedar Lane is the, on the other side of the uh, Cedar Lane is Robinson's Nature Center. And uh, there's a, a townhouse community basically at the northeast quadrant of Route 32 in Cedar Lane. And what is not 
showing up here. There, there is a townhouse uh, office uh, project that exists at the um, uh, at uh, Grace Drive and Cedar Lane, and next to that is a constructed project called Robinson Overlook, which is a uh, uh, a mixed income project of by a, uh, constructed, developed by a third party um, in conjunction with Howard County Housing uh, Commission. This is uh, WR Grace located on Grace Drive and north of uh, WR Grace is the uh, a Cedar Overlook project, a uh, residential single family detached, which is currently under construction. Rob, whatever you're showing uh, doesn't show up on the screen. We just have the cover sheet. Oh, I'm sorry. So you can't see my cursor, okay. No. Interesting. I, am I alone? Yeah, yeah you're correct. I'm, I'm just seeing the cover sheet. Okay. I, yeah, yeah, me too. That was going to be my first question. I'm not really seeing all the context. Rob, we can see your cursor when you move it, I believe, but it is just looking at the cover sheet. Okay. Uh, I thought okay. I saw it before. Oh, yeah, I see. It so it, did, it, didn't, it didn't progress. <clears throat> I'm going to try to reset here for a second. Uh, is it, is it, are you able to see now the second sheet or not? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Is it taking up your most of your screen or is it small on your screen? It's pretty small. Yep, it's small. All right. I'm going to try to reset which screen I'm showing. I think that's the issue. So now you're seeing the cover sheet. Is it still the same size? Now it's bigger. Okay, wonderful. So maybe now it'll progress. Now do you see the vicinity map? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. So, um, I, and I'm and I'm going to tear through this quick because you heard it but didn't see it, right? So, uh, Cedar Lane outlined in red the proposed site. Uh, residential projects, um, existing residential Columbia single family detached uh, behind us and next to us to the east and to the north. To the north is Freetown Road, Hickory Ridge Shopping Center. In Hickory Ridge Shopping Center behind there, we have the Sunrise. Um, assisted living facility, Freetown Road, <clears throat> other side of Cedar Lane, uh, Lorian Harmony Hall, Scotts Glen, uh, age restricted community to the north of Lorian, um, Robinson's uh, Nature Center here to the uh, to the south, uh, WR Grace along Grace Drive down here, a, uh, a townhouse uh, office project here. Constructed at this location is the uh, Housing Commission uh, Robinson Overlook Mixed Income Project is 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 located um, at that location. Again, project is uh, opposite of Brayburn Road, on on the uh, what would be the east side of of Cedar Lane. Um, are you seeing this next slide? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Um, again, this is the proposed site. You could see the under underlying on on this view is the existing topography. The site is predominantly uh, wooded. There, it's comprised of two parcels combining to 8.90 acres. There is an existing house with an access to Cedar Lane. Um, 
in the south corner of the property that would obviously be removed for the for the project and that is uh, some of the only open area other than that like I said the site is um, uh, predominantly wooded um, these uh, photo a little photo tour uh, photo one is looking from the south on Cedar Lane up into the site you could see the driveway in the foreground of that picture, picture number two is kind of a dead-on look into the site as I said it was predominantly um, wooded and you'll see that that was one of our objectives is to keep uh, a large majority of the woods especially around the perimeter uh, photo three is looking down Brayburn toward the site so uh, straight ahead past that dump truck would be our would be the subject site some uh, picture four is is looking from the north toward the south into the site uh, along Cedar Lane. Uh, photo five is taken up in the adjacent uh, single family detached uh, subdivision looking toward our site. Uh, pretty, pretty much from just outside that cul-de-sac and picture six is from the cul-de-sac, uh, which is west, uh, east of the site. Again, looking uh, west toward Toward the subject site. Rob, quick quick question: Is that topo sloping um, down away from Cedar Lane, or is it sloping up? Great question. So the 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 topography is sloping toward Cedar Lane. Um, okay. If you're seeing this current view, um, the the area with these houses, the existing houses on the adjacent property, this is the high end of the property. And it slopes significantly down to Cedar Lane. Okay. Uh, Cedar Cedar Lane in itself is is the grade is from north to south. It's higher uh, at this Brayburn intersection, which we tried to um, to utilize that as our access point. And um, and Cedar Lane is is falling as it goes uh, in this picture to the south to the southwest. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, the, the, the site is has a considerable um, woods on the property. The intent of this design is to retain as much of the existing woods um, as possible. We have graded this site so that it meets criteria as far as road grades go. The intent would be to come up into the site and then this, uh, for instance, this um, this road, this first road would be um, at about a four to five percent slope to accommodate the grade breaks between the proposed villa townhouses, the age restricted townhouses, and to um, to minimize uh, any um, uh, breaks that wouldn't be ideal. So, um, you know, we can do eight inch increments between the units is, is fairly common and and is easy to accommodate. Beyond that, it can get a bit tricky and it's not as uh, not as wonderful, considering it's an age restricted community. We wanted the uh, the roads to be, um, you know, basically at no more than the, the five percent. So that's why in that area along the units, it's 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 a fairly flat road. Uh, clubhouse when you come up the hill initially from uh, Cedar Lane along the proposed road, this corner would be occupied by a clubhouse and some outdoor seating area. Um, and I'll go into the pathways and sidewalks um, as soon as I get through a little bit of the description here. We continue to climb up the hill, getting now to close to the top grade. And we have another short road with uh, a double loaded with uh, the, the proposed villas. The villas on the high side are basically at grade front and back. Um, the villas on the low side, which would be this uh, side, the, the kind of the northwest side, would, would have basements. So those units would be able to take up grade and then create this kind of a common area in the back, which would uh, have be green space in addition to some uh, bioretention or bioswale type facilities in there. Sidewalk and pedestrian uh, connection. So we anticipate that we'll have a sidewalk connection past the adjacent property and up to the village center. We think that's really important for this project. Um, 
on this view, at least initially, we don't have sidewalk on the outside of the road. Um, and um, sidewalk would be on one side and that is on the inside of the project. The idea there is if there's some room we could uh, cut back on some grading or use for a small um, retaining wall to further reduce grading. Uh, that's what we'd like to do there. And um, so the sidewalk, we have a sidewalk circulation, but it's not on the, on the right now, not on the outside. Again, sidewalk on the uh, south, uh, south of our entrance uh, running down Cedar Lane. <clears throat> we would be using the uh, new uh, 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 street design manual um, for possibly for some other improvements, or it could be that the sidewalks turn into a multi-purpose pathway at a greater width in lieu of doing uh, making any improvements on the road. <clears throat> in the site, we would um, will create a a pathway circulation. Um, we'll try to have some seating areas in the uh, in the in the um, in the wooded area and have access. Uh, the the path that we have here uh, we felt was. Uh, worked pretty well with grades and with uh, some the retaining walls that we think are going to be required and that the uh, seating area here would be uh, would also be a, a appropriate. <clears throat> there is a retaining wall that would be required and it'll show up on our site section along the, the low side. Again, it's 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 feasible that we could grade it out, but that's not what we want to do. We want we'd rather have a retaining wall here along the low side um, in order to retain the existing woods, that buffering, if you will, to the site, and um, keep every everything intact. Basically, that you're seeing here would be um, kept intact with existing with the existing vegetation. Um, just um, to be accurate, this area that my cursor is in adjacent to the drive going up, that area would be either cleared in part and replanted. But again, as I mentioned earlier, we would entertain a wall along that side as well. Not, not a, um, a very high wall, but a wall to help mitigate the grading along that side so that we retain more of the natural existing vegetation um, and, and clear less of that and, and, and retain it. Uh, this area at the bottom would also, uh, there's no grading in here, and this would be retained uh, wooded areas as well. So the idea here was to go with the villas. These villas are not the largest of, of product, that they are probably the more moderate or smaller size um, villas that are out on the market. And the idea was to keep this as compact as possible keep it to the center and, and retain as much as of that perimeter landscaping, uh, the perimeter woods and, and actually would become a forest conservation easement, um, perpetually uh, retain that way. A section looking uh, through from Cedar Lane up through the site, I think this is a pretty good indication of, of how this thing will look. You come off of Cedar Lane, we'd have the area of the vegetated area that we would retain, the woods that we would retain, again, in a forest conservation easement area, retaining wall up to the, uh, first, uh, the first set of townhouses, um, and then um, driveway in the front, the road between the units, and then the, uh, the, the next townhouse, uh, which would be basically at grade front and back, it would not be a walkout condition. And then um, the, the common the common backyard between those uh, townhouses at a fairly similar grade with possibility of a small retaining wall be between the two, <clears throat> and that would be limited. And then getting up to the uh, top top of the hill, and you can see we're kind of getting a grade now, getting back to grade, the existing grade. Um, some additional screening uh, on that west side to the existing development. 
where there's a lack of um, there may be a lack of, of vegetation in that area. It's, it's not as uh, densely uh, vegetated today. And in addition, we probably need to do some clearing up there for this for this uh, townhouse. So that would be a further plan. But this is a I think a pretty good repu um, a, a pretty good representation of what uh, the project uh, would look like as far as a section from from Cedar Lane. Um, I, I like this image of the that we have here of the of the uh, interlocking block wall with geogrid type tie back because I think it's it it to me was indicative of, of what I think this thing is going to look like with a wall and in front of the wall retaining the vegetation between the wall and Cedar Lane. Um, so I thought that was a I, I like that that image and that's why we we picked that one. Other than that, the, 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 this is just a, a palette of, of, of trees that, that would be similar to what we would pick or the landscape architect may, may choose for, for, this, for this project. These are um, units that, a, um, that our plan is kind of modeled after right now. And um, the, the, it shows the, uh, what the villa unit would look like um, from the from the front view, and then um, also this would be the the unit on the low side uh, where we have the basement and we make up grade as you can see. Same in this in this situation where this was taken, uh, we we make up that grade from <clears throat> I'm sorry from front to back. Um, just backing up for one second, I want to talk about stormwater management. Um, the idea is to integrate um, bioretention facilities throughout. I really think that the bioretention facilities due to the slopes and the nature of the site are really only going to be able to handle the, the, the villa units, the units themselves. <clears throat> the driveways, I would propose that we would use um, permeable pavers or permeable concrete. And I believe for the roads, because of the slopes, we would be using a combination of two products. One would be, be filteras uh, with the trees in them for some of the water quality, some of the ESD requirements. I believe that we would go underground with the uh, uh, the modular wet, wet, wetland product uh, with some pipe storage uh, to treat the roads. I just don't see, I really don't want to be grading into uh, wooded areas in order to provide stormwater management. If, if in fact we've got to go under paving uh, with with some of these products in order to provide the ESD requirement, I think that is would be more desirable than clearing um, more land to do the to to fulfill that stormwater management. So some of it uh, with microbiome tensions on site. We have the permeable paving. And I think the uh, the modular wetlands would would suit us well for uh, for some of the road areas. Storm drain is constructed in in Cedar Lane. It is fairly a modern system. I'm sure it's designed to pick this site up to some degree. If it if in fact the capacity of that is is limited to this site in 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 its existing condition, we would certainly um, provide additional uh, storage so that. Um, that we can discharge that system safely. Uh, discharge that system um, at, at at its design capacity. So the architecture. That is. Um, these are some uh, some imagery just for the. Uh, the pathway, of course, we would do a pet station, um, pet stations along the pathway. Uh, just some ideas for for street light um, fixture. We would anticipate some uh, some of these uh, picnic tables and benches to be utilized throughout the site, especially down on this patio that we uh, would envision um, at at the clubhouse. And that's that concludes my presentation for Cedar Overlook.
Bob, are you there? <clears throat> I think yeah. we lost Bob. Yeah, I see his name, but not his picture. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think I put Bob to sleep. I think you did. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. He's waking up. You're on mute. You're on mute, Bob. Bob, you're on mute. Oh no, we can't hear him. Don't you love technology? Yeah. I can't lip read either, so. Oh. Hang on, let me send him a message here real fast. Can we just keep moving? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nicholas Haynes. I'm a planner with Department of Planning and Zoning. Um, usually what immediately pre uh, precedes the uh, applicant's presentation uh, is a quick uh, staff report given by uh, Planning and Zoning before the panel goes in and um, discusses the particulars of the site. Um, I think Mr. Vogel did a fairly good job um, explaining all the particulars of the site, um, as you did mention, it's it's 8.9 acres um, comprised of 2 parcels. There's an existing house um, on the southern, or I guess the southwestern parcel and the rest of the site is is forested. Um, Larry, to answer your question, yeah, as Mr. Vogel mentioned, the high point is in the southeast corner um, of the site and in the grade, um, you know, slopes down towards Cedar Lane. It's almost, I think, 60 foot. Um, Drop. So, I mean, as Mr. Vogel mentioned, there is significant grade change from, you know, as, as you head back towards the street from the rear of the property. Um, the entire property, as I mentioned, I mean, it is forested. We do know that there, um, there are, you know, a fair amount of specimen trees and stuff on site. Um, there are no streams, wetlands and stuff like that um, have yet to be determined or anything on, on, you know, on the property. So, I mean, I think it's fairly straightforward. Um, access is provided from Cedar Lane, um, and that would be the you know the sole you know way in and out, and uh, <clears throat> you know which and you guys have seen the proposed layout for the 35 proposed units. Um, I know they don't have a builder and stuff yet, so the I mean the architecturals and stuff that they have proposed you know are still very conceptual, you know, but they give I guess an idea of the feel and character of uh, of, what, of of what they have proposed. Um, Department of Planning and Zoning, we, if you could evaluate make recommendations on the layout and configuration of the site plan. Um, I mean, I know I, the the panel did see it, you know, sort of a similar project, you know, recently, and you guys provided some very good commentary, um, you know, on circulation and, you know, and maybe how it relates to the surrounding, you know, neighborhood network. Um, so maybe there are some, maybe you guys have some, you know, maybe alternate ideas or something that could maybe help this, you know, flow in a different way, a more efficient way. Um, do the, uh, th does the layout, you know, fit within the context of the existing neighborhood? Um, is the street state, the streetscape design, you know, adequate for the development or. I mean, I realize, you know, they have, they have these, you know. Great issues they got to work around, but, um. You know, it, maybe is there something that they haven't considered that could maybe work. Better, um, could you, uh. If I would make recommendations on the proposed community center, um. I mean, I know it's it's up front. Is is there maybe a more a better location that you guys would suggest for it? Um, I know that was like a sort of a hot topic, um, you know, at the last ARH, you know, sort of layout that you guys had. Um, and any recommendations on the um, proposed open amenity space, you know, connections, you know, stuff like that. Um, this project does have in the benefit, you know, of being along Cedar Lane, and there is sidewalk, existing sidewalk, you know, that runs, um, you know, up to uh, Hickory Ridge. Um, uh, 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 the Hickory Ridge uh, Neighborhood Center to the north and then down to the Robinson Nature Center. So there is, I mean, good connectivity, you know, you know, there. So, um, you know, maybe there's some different opportunities and stuff, you know, for you know, cir pedestrian circulation and stuff on site that they, uh, that they may not have considered. Um, but any, any comments and, you know, and thoughts that the panel could uh, provide would be greatly appreciated. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I'll start off. Uh, Fred Marino, uh, I have a couple of questions, Rob. Could you go to the site section, please? Yep. 
Uh, I'm not seeing it. I'm still seeing your cover page. Wait, let me uh, let me go back and reset that again. Yeah, so so the units that are to the that are closest to Cedar Lane to the to the west, um, it's a smaller building, but looking at this section. How tall is that retaining wall? Uh, I think we had that wall um, anywhere from from ten to ten to like fifteen feet, ten to eighteen feet. I was gonna say it's easily fifteen to twenty. Looking at the scale there, I could be off a bit, but mm -hmm. so my question is number one. Um, how long does that wall run? Is it just behind the, the units or is it further because it's retaining the street? Yeah, so it, and, then, it's, and, then, and then part and parcel to that, did you explore some off hill unit types rather to help mitigate the amount of wall? I mean, it just yeah. seems that's a huge amount of wall. I know you're dealing with some significant grade, but it seems like maybe if you did some off hill units, so in other words, you know, you enter in at, at the second floor, and then you got a, you got a, a walkout at the lower level, and the unit the building's three stories tall. You might be able to cut that wall down by a third or a half. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, the, the graphic here isn't isn't ideal, but these are um, you enter at the uh, living level, and the rear elevation is the is the is actually the basement is the basement level. So. So it's three stories out of grade at the back, but you still need a wall 17 feet tall? Yeah, so that was the other thing I was wow. gonna mention. So where that line is struck, uh, where that section is, is the absolute worst location. Um, it does also run along the, uh, uh, in, in this view, the, the wall comes up the side and then run, continues to run along this road, but the road is is descending. Yeah, so, I know, yeah. So the wall is is coming down. So right there is that corner where this section is taken is the absolute worst um, because it is it is the furthest downhill point. Yeah, uh, that, yeah. That is why the wall is there. It get, it gets better in, in 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 both directions. I mean, I guess the reason I bring it up is to me, I never like regardless of how much planting you put in front of a wall like that, and a wall like that is so imposing. Um, particularly along Cedar Lane, where it might be kind of nicer to at least have the units somewhat scale wise, you know, speak back to the street. Um, all, you know, albeit it's it's a major road, it's not a not a neighborhood street. Um, but but to have a 17 foot high, 20 foot high wall to me is just um, I never like to do that. And I, if there's a way you could somehow make all these units step down the slope, which I know to some extent you're already doing, and also capitalize on them being walkout unit types. Is there a way to reduce the um, the wall height? <clears throat> and then the other question I have is, um, so looking, to, looking at the units that are farthest to the east, the second building going west, there's like a courtyard or a backyard space between two rows of buildings, and there's a line there. Is that another retaining wall right there? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a that's a relatively uh, small wall that we technically have graded in. The reason being is it take help, helps take up the grade. There's grade from this um, from the road going navigating up the hill, and um, there there is some grade being taken up there. The extent of that wall exactly. I'm not sure, but it's it's it was of the two to four feet, something in that range. It's not okay. a substantial wall. All right, so it's not a 10, 15 foot high wall, so lower yeah. wall. Hey, Fred, um, Fred, could I interject something? Yeah. Uh, since you're on the grading um, rather than me repeating it later. So Rob, uh, has this been graded out? Because I see that the walls and how you're using the units to 
you know, kind of retain the soils to create these different levels. And you said the slopes on those um, streets that run parallel with Cedar Lane are four to five percent. How are you able to get the main road coming up if it's a 60 foot um, climb? And I don't see you cutting out at the top. You're getting back into grade. Uh, is, what's the slope on the, the main feeder street then? Yeah, so we're, we're up against the county maximum, which is uh, 12%. Oh, wow. Jeez. Wow. So that's so then once we get, for instance, once we get up to this intersection, mm -hmm. then, then we're <clears throat> trying to run at, at no more than 5%. We, we navigate back up the hill again, uh, and then we try to level out and again run this the slope uh, at about 5%. So, but, yeah. but, but, a, but a preliminary grading plan has been done. I mean, you're able to do that even with the 12%, plus I. I thought maybe you would be cutting into that slope and then there would be some sort of retaining wall at the very top where you were kind of like sinking the top units down in order to, you know, reduce the overall slope of the main feeder street. But um, I I'm assuming you must have done that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have proceeded to this stage. Correct. Yeah, you could see, uh, I see it on my screen and it's faint, but you could see the there are there are white lines in here representing the, the, proposed, the proposed contours. When we got up to the top, my, my thoughts were this, that I didn't want to be, I, I wanted to be close to grade at the rear of these houses with the existing houses. I, I wanted that to feel good together. I didn't want a big retaining wall. I didn't want to be at a grade with that adjacent community. I wanted it to, to be close. And so yeah, I could have gone with another wall back here and done some things differently, but I, I like the way it turned out with the backyards being at similar grades and not and and it, these folks not looking at the rooftops of these units um you know just basically kind of being neighborly right that's right no i i, I understand I, I just didn't know it was possible to get that um street coming in to um have a reasonable grade which i don't know 12 percent done isn't that's pretty steep but <laughs> did did you look at trying to uh, provide ingress egress into the site from the southern end, Bob, versus the northern end. Yeah, the southern end is is worse because it's at a lower elevation. But the whole site, as well as Cedar Lane, slopes down. Then, right? Um, both well, the, high, the high points is is up is up here. Right. We still have to get to this point. We we have a shorter run. Well, but not really, right? Because if you came in parallel to that property line at the south end and then came up, you got a longer run. Keep going, keep going along the property line there. And then keep going along that property line and come right in there. Isn't that a much longer run for you? Probably not as long as, as this run. That's that's a pretty long dimension along along this side. Yeah. And we're starting at a higher elevation. Yeah, yeah. But you'd be at a lower elevation. I don't know. I just just a question. Um, my last comment is that I, I um I don't think I on this particular site I don't think I have a problem with where the clubhouse is. Um, and it looks like you've got parking there for it. And I guess um, I, I may have missed what you said. I'm not sure what that white area is outside the clubhouse. But I I, I think that could be a pretty nice. Uh, element for the community, um, albeit it's at the front entrance. Um, and I think what you've done circulation wise for pedestrian flow and everything else and the architectural style you're intending is all reasonable. So I don't have any other comments or questions. <clears throat> yeah, I guess I'll go next, um, if that's okay. Go uh, for it, Larry. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I mean, that's why I was making comments about the grading, so those questions were answered. Um, I also agree, um, I, I don't want to get into the controversy as to whether a community this size needs a clubhouse, because we've done that on every um, age-restricted community we've looked at um, lately, but I, I like the location there. I'd rather see the clubhouse and green space and, you know, nice landscaping there as you come in and up the hill rather than uh, the back of another unit or something like that, so I have no problems with that. Um, I see there's, it looks like a very small parking area. I, the, the question of guest parking always comes up. I, I think we always assume that there's two car garages and that 
the owners will have their cars in the garage, but it seems like in most cases, the garages are used for additional storage. And so the owner's cars are in the driveways. And then I question like, well, where do guests park? Um, is, is the street wide enough that there could be parallel parking or, or, or how do we address that, especially on a steep site like this? Um, we, we, we typically try and have guest parking, um, you know, built in as, you know, a, a small parking area is off of like each street, but I, I don't see where that's possible here unless you, you know, lose more trees and build more retaining walls. So I, I have, that's a question I have. And then also at the end of each uh, street that's parallel, um, I mean, perpendicular to the feeder street, is that um, large enough for a turnaround, like for a car to back um, back up and then, you know, come out in case they've made a wrong turn or something? It's, I, I, I wasn't sure what that was. If they, take your cursor a little to the left. Yeah, there. Is that just considered a kind of a, you know, a, a pull uh, into and then back out to, to reverse your direction and go back out the street? Yeah, that, that, that is uh, the county standard um, okay. uh, T turnaround that is designed for um, not only vehicles to turn around, but uh, it's supposed to be suitable for uh, fire and emergency vehicles as well. So it's a 60 feet wide um, by 20, uh, 60 feet width, 20 feet depth um, T turnaround. And that's okay. that is the yeah. county standard detail. Um, uh, with regard to the stormwater management, um, I do encourage you to follow all those things that you've talked about in terms of the BMPs. I mean, the the uh, re, um, uh, swells that we talked about, the bioswells, um, in, uh, pervious pavement um, would be great in the driveways, um, uh, walkways, or wherever you can do it, um, because uh, it is important to preserve as many trees as you can there. So. I encourage you to um, keep that in mind as you move to, um, you know, latter stages of design here. And with regard to the plant palette, also I'm really happy to see that, um, I know it's conceptual in nature, but it seems to be about 80% native um, trees and shrubs. So I, um, you know, um, want to uh, encourage you to make sure that that plant palette kind of stays with that type of um, ratio. Um, other than that, I don't have any other comments on I know architecture hasn't been selected yet. Um, this architecture just seems to be repeated over and over throughout the county, and and it's been um, with us for years. I mean, uh, rage restricted um, communities out here in Ellicott City have that type of look. So I, my personal preference, because the last one we looked at um, had more of the craftsman architecture or bungalow, and to me it just seems more um, appealing, um, has more curb appeal, but um, again, that's like your decisions, but um, again, something to consider in terms of making this uh, a community that kind of stands out and, and is very welcoming is something to consider as you move on. Can you um, hear me? That, now, I heard you now. <laughs> I'm back. Can you hear me now? So I am back. Okay. okay. Uh, my comments are, uh, uh, I, I agree with everything that's been said. Uh, when you do a landscape plan, I'd rather see you plant in the islands in between the buildings instead of along the driveway where you already have woods. I guess it's on the, the, uh, the east side where you have, you've preserved the woodland. I don't, I don't see any point in planting street trees along there. I'd rather see you plant those street trees within the community and between the center units. Uh, so when you do a landscape plan, I hope you do that. Um, the, the small flowering trees, which I, I think you're proposing, at least conceptually, um, between these units, I, I don't think they're appropriate. I think you should use at least medium-sized shade trees. Um, this has always been a, 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 a point with me. I, I think in these small communities, these clubhouses are pretty much worthless. I'd love to have someone study if anyone uses them. I know they're part of the requirement, uh, so I won't opine any more than that. But uh, other than that, I, you know, uh, I agree with everything that's been said so far. Vivian, you. do you have any comments? Vivian, are you with us? I hope so. We need a quorum. <laughs> I think you bumped her out. <laughs> when you came back on, she disappeared. 
No, I see her. She's still she's, there, but she's on the I'm sorry. Yeah. I was looking for the mute button. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I I agree with Larry's comment on the architecture. It'd be nice to see some variety in that. Um, I think it's nicely cited. It's close to you know the Howard County General Hospital, and and you know there are a lot. It's a nice wooded lot, so I think, um, you know, you probably could get a just with the other the other houses in the neighboring uh, neighborhoods. Um, it would be nice to have something that's not so. Um, I mean, something a little bit more interesting and more, a little more thought put to it, or a little more design. But other than that, I mean, I really don't have that many comments. I think every, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a really good site for this project. So that's all I have. Okay. Does anyone have any motions? Right. Um, the only motion I would make is, is for Bob to go back and see if there's any way to try and shave some height off that wall that's nearly 20 feet tall. Um, if that uh, yeah, it really comes down to a grading thing and, and whether or not you can get the off-hill units to somehow mitigate some more of that height, um, that would be my only, um, only um, motion. Um, I'll second that, and maybe it's a matter of stepping that into two wall, two smaller walls. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Bob. It just I never like walls that are more than about eight, ten feet tall myself. So I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes. Uh, I would suggest that when you finally do a landscape plan, that you um, <clears throat> plant more trees along the streets, more street trees, and also do some planting. Uh, in that area between the units in the middle of the project. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 So I, I, I would like to see a planting plan at some point. I don't know. You don't need to bring this back to us, but I'd like to have you submit it to uh, uh, planning and zoning and have them send it to us for comment. Anyone second that? I'll second that, Larry. All in favor? Aye. 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 That passes. Uh, so I guess uh, uh, we're done here. So uh, thanks very much, Rob, for your presentation. Thank and, you. Uh, thanks, Rob. Thank we you. We can move on to the next project. Thank you. Thank you. Rob, I assume you're going to be doing the presentation for the next two as well, or do I need to assign to somebody else? Do you get all the work in uh, Howard County? Or so? <laughs> so I'm going to I was thinking the same thing. Are there no other engineers out there? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, the, except the, except this this is an industrial project and it's not very sexy. So, um, I, I will present, and we do have. Basically, the project architect for each of these projects, um, they are on the same site, as you know, but totally independent of each other. And I have each each architect will present uh, his as well. So it'll be me and then the architect for each of them. Gotcha. Okay. We don't need to go through the whole drill, but if the architect, so as they come on, would introduce themselves. So I think the next one. Um, is the cold is the dryers uh, grand ice cream cold storage building? Yes. Is the next yep. one. Yes, the new building on the north. Would you like me to start? We just saw Bob leave. Uh, why don't we get started? Why don't you introduce uh, the architect and introduce himself? Give Bob a second to come back in and then you can start the presentation. Yes, good evening, uh, gentlemen. My name is Michael Jones. I'm president of Primus Design Services. Uh, we're a design build provider in the food industry, storage and food production facilities. 
and uh, headquartered in Woodstock, Georgia, but a nationwide company. We've partnered with Rob's firm that uh, has intimate knowledge of the site that we'll discuss tonight uh, relative to um, civil engineering. And uh, we'll talk about um, the nature of the expansion that we're contemplating on this site. So uh, architect by uh, trade, I'm principal of our firm. There's also a gentleman that's listening in, Cody Moore, one of the project designers on my team. He probably won't present anything, but he's listening in. So um, if you see the name Nathan Moore, that's uh, Cody, he's on my team. So thank you. Would you like me to bring Cody in as a presenter to provide feedback if needed? Uh, you can go ahead if it's not a big deal. Otherwise, I can probably handle it, but certainly if there's something he wants to add, it would be great. So, yes, sir. Thank you. Great. You're all set. I'll mute Rob until, uh, until you need me. So, are we ready? Would you like me to begin? Yes. Yep. Bob's back. We're all set. Great. So, this is an interesting site. This is um, Dryer's Grand Ice Cream. It is located at the, what would be the Northeast quadrant of Whiskey Bottom Road in Route 1 in Laurel. It is, um, it has been expanded on uh, several, many times. Uh, it originally started out, I believe, as a Cloverland Dairy uh, facility, much smaller. And then about 17 years ago, 18 years ago, and I couldn't believe it when I looked that up, we did a really large expansion to this building for dryers. And um, most of what you see in with black roof is, is I think, mostly that expansion. Uh, when we did When we did that expansion, it... There, were, there was just a tremendous amount of work involved. Uh, Howard County was very much involved. It was a design build process, which I've never been involved with uh, since with Howard County, where we were actually designing, going to the director of public works office, getting plans approved, and the next day constructing it. So it was a pretty interesting project. Um, the parking, uh, now to give a, a little bit more detailed um, a detail about the site and the surroundings. This parking area, I just want to point this out. This parking area um, was part of the, the, the main expansion that we did, but uh, dryers at the time didn't need this area at the end that was designed, but not, um, not constructed. It was taken off the plans at the last minute, crossed off, and um, it is, it'll actually uh, come back into play, and we'll we'll discuss that actually at the at the at the the second part of the dryers meeting. Um, there is a, um, a existing um, BGE substation located adjacent to the property at at this location. Uh, these are various um, commercial, industrial, retail businesses that exist off of. Route 1, I believe they've converted one building into partially being uh, self storage or some type of commercial storage. There's car parts. I think that might be wholesale. Uh, there's automotive, some automotive uses, all pretty much one story buildings adjacent to Route 1 uh, at, at this location. To the north, uh, where my cursor is now, is the north property line. To the north of that property line is a, another industrial park area uh, that is currently occupied by um, one of the um, uh, industrial rental um, operations. And that I think is pretty much a, a one, one story building. This area where my cursor is now, that is a forest conservation area that was established um, back when we 17, 18 years ago when we did uh, the, the big expansion for dryers, that area will remain. Uh, we designed an egress only uh, adjacent to that forest conservation area, and that is basically a slip ramp, if you will, to Route 1 uh, northbound for exiting, basically exiting uh, uh, tr truck traffic. So they can, if you're going northbound Route 1, they don't have to re-enter Whiskey Bottom Road. They go directly to, to Route 1 and, and are pointed Route 1 north. Uh, 
at that at that location. Uh, to the south of Whiskey Bottom Road are just a variety of industrial uh, buildings and properties. Um, most notably is the uh, coastal, the large coastal Sunbelt produce facility uh, that is located south of Whiskey Bottom Road. Um, and uh, the other, these other properties are just old industrial one-story, one-story buildings. On the opposite side of Whiskey Bottom Road are some um, <clears throat> vacant uh, commercial properties. Uh, there's a, this is a uh, two-story hotel, motel uh, located on the other side of Route 1. This is the closest vicinal um, residential project. Uh, this is a uh, apartment project with access, they have their access derived from Route 1, and that is a, a, an apartment uh, type project. The area that we're going to be uh, focused on for this, for this um, presentation is going to be uh, this area. And this is the current stormwater management facility. Next, uh, this is the existing stormwater management facility. And, and I just want to, one thing I, I was remiss, that this is the uh, Camden line, uh, the CSX Camden line uh, rail line located at this location. And this is Anne Arundel County over here. So we're adjacent to uh, to the rail line, we're adjacent to Anne, Anne Arundel County. Uh, back to this, this is a stormwater management facility. This is a small pre -sewer, sewage pretreatment uh, facility that's that 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 provides treatment of the of the um, uh, discharge sewage discharge prior to entering the uh, county's uh, public sewer system um i'm going to go to the um the, the entire site is over 48 48 acres and the it's a 600,000 uh, square foot manufacturing facility today and the property is zoned um and more. So this is that stormwater management facility I was pointing out on the on the northern side of the property. That stormwater management facility is currently being designed to be underground structurally. It will move. It'll be confined to this area here, which I will uh, go through what is being proposed. But this is the stormwater management area, and the proposed building which is, this is the High Bay Cold Storage Building, would be located over what is currently the stormwater management pond, which, is, which will uh, be backfilled, obviously, properly backfilled, and this uh, facility uh, built over it. The stormwater management access, uh, stormwater management discharge, if you will, will be at the same location it basically is today, which is, um, is over to the, to the Northwest and, um, enters this uh, existing um, stream area. So <clears throat> this is an existing stream. It is an existing floodplain. There are wetlands associated with that. Uh, whatever was permitted uh, back when the expansion was done, we don't plan on um, disturbing any further. We do not plan on removing any of the forest conservation area. There is a slight adjustment that'll be required just to accommodate the new pipe discharge, but it's basically at the same location. There's a very slight change to the discharge. There'll probably be some small um, uh, change needed to the forest conservation easement, but for all intents and purposes, that, that forested area remains and it's uh, as it is today. So part of the building, part of the proposed cold storage building is basically behind that a mature wooded, wooded area, and we'll. I have a photo tour, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see some pictures from there. Uh, uh, Mr. Jones can would be able to present that. So this is the High Bay Cold Storage Building. There is also a lower, uh, not as high component, which is located here. Uh, the height of the proposed cold storage building is as high as. Um, 116 feet. The maximum height per zoning is 100 feet. We went through the county's uh, administrative adjustment process and were approved at, at, for the 116 feet 
um, fight. A uh, sidewalk, um, not that it's that important, but I'll bring that up. There is sidewalk along the Whiskey Bottom Road uh, frontage. It goes uh, in front of the BGE property and it continues along our frontage on Route 1. And it does provide connectivity to the employee entrance for the for the facility. So, um, you know, there, you know, for whatever uh, public transportation there would be, or or pedestrians in this area, we we do we we have previously accommodated accommodated that, uh, so folks can get get to the building from from the outside. With that said, I will let Mr. Jones pick up with the elevations of the building. And um, uh, Mike, if when you want me to flip to uh, flip back or forth, just let me know. Yeah, very good, Rob. Thank you. So, as Rob has mentioned, this expansion is contemplated to the uh, northeast of the existing manufacturing facility. What you see illustrated here, we were gonna we will have an overhead connector that will tie in from the existing manufacturing facility over to this new automated storage retrieval system warehouse that where Rob's pointing now will be just to the left in that drawing or north of the facility. You also see in that view, the low bay, we've got some 3D images too. This will make sense for you here in just a split second. One of the challenges here on this site, we're dealing with uh, significant slopes. So as you can see, relative to the existing facility, we're we got a tall building, but we are able to bury some of it in the ground just by its sheer nature of where it's located on site and do some of the transition vertically that's required to still keep traffic flow on site. Um, would point out, as Rob mentioned, uh, existing car parking and all that, all that uh, site access will not be modified. So this thing will, you know, be done, I guess, behind the fence, if you will. Um, and you'll see that in some of the views here shortly. Um, the building itself will be insulated metal panel construction. The, the actual use of the building is a minus 20 ice cream freezer. Uh, know anything about heat gain? Uh, white is good and anything non-white starts drawing in heat. So trying to maximize our energy savings with this. So you're gonna have an, a white uh, insulated panel of high rise facility there in the, in the um, storage component and then white insulated panels. You don't see in this imagery yet where we have a note of architectural metal panels. They do have an office component for the new operation as well that will complement the existing building in terms of function. And that will have some architectural panels, um, not white. They'll be uh, probably a darker gray. The client's uh, palette, uh, they got a standard that they like to use. So um, we'll have renderings available uh, when the time is right. But, that's pretty much what's going on here. We're taking pallets from production. They will either be staged in their existing warehouse and transported over or direct connected immediately, depending on the nature of the order. And um, they will come over, they will be stored, put away with mechanical systems that uh, do not require humans in a very cold, non uh, fun environment to work in. You know anything about warehousing uh, and the industrial nature of this? It's um, not conducive to a lot of employees staying long. So you see again, the back piece then is an automated storage and retrieval system. The front piece, the low bay is where you'll have a lot of the human activity, pulling loads from uh, from the system automatically be delivered to the dock and then they can actually be put on the trucks and uh, then distributed from there. So Ralph, yeah, if you wanna to switch to the next page, it'll kind of give you a little bit of a, a view of that. So. The gray, darker gray area is more just some of the massing of the existing uh, manufacturing facility. So this would be looking almost north where Rob's cursor is to the new facility. You get a little hint there on the center where we're gonna dress up the front office piece. You got the overhead connector from the plant, uh, some dock doors. You'll see the nature of this system is such that the, the warehouse management system can police all of the ordering so you're not gonna have a bunch of truck traffic all day, every day. They're able to stage the loads properly and uh, manage the traffic flow. And they're really displacing the distribution component for this project into the new facility. 
So it'll be a small increase in traffic, but it's not significant. And Rob has um, been addressing that on the civil side, you know, with with um, the appropriate um, approvals. So again, one of you to see we've got uh, the white facility. I have a nice white roof. So again, from an energy saving standpoint in the area, it'll be a big consumer of energy, but in a very efficient manner. And um, that's important, of course, you know, for a lot of things. As you know, during COVID, uh, food related facilities were considered essential facilities. So this is certainly part of that program. And again, to continue, you know, you can't tell people what to eat, um, but they do eat. And even if it's ice cream, it's still part of an essential program. So uh, very important that this facility is able to um, be constructed. We've also taken some snapshots, Mr. Moore, that was uh, addressed. Uh, we've done some views of the facility as it looks in the neighborhood out on various components. And Rob's got some of these labeled here to kind of get a feel for the, um, the massing. And Rob, I'm questioning, did you have the other ones as well? Uh, I mean, we had the, I think the second page. Yeah. This one? Yeah, those are, yeah, look a little bit different than the first ones we had. So again, again we're pretty much hidden from, um, the road for you know 80 percent of the height of the building just due to the existing vegetation that's in place and the uh distance that we are removed from the property lines basically out at uh whiskey bottom and route one so pretty straightforward project for me it's an industrial facility that many may not be familiar with the function and all that certainly available to ask uh answer any questions that you may have and Rob, I don't know if you have the, the first ones, um, but if you don't, I think it's pretty straightforward what we're showing and certainly open to questions. Uh, Nick, do you have a staff report? Nick? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, the design team, I think, did a very, you know, good and thorough job explaining, you know, exactly what they, what it is that they have proposed. Um, you know, this, this project is subject to, you know, DAP review. It, it does tech, to, it has um, frontage along route one, um, you know, as uh, along the, um, if you I say, there we go. If you're looking at the, uh, the plan view, the, um, yeah, there is frontage along route one where the, uh, the main parking um, parking area is down along down at that intersection where whiskey bottom and, and route one meet. And they also along the Northern portion, there's a, um, uh, 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 and mainly it's, I think, you know, it's for shipping. Um, that's correct. Uh, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it, you know, right in, um, or sorry, right out, <clears throat> excuse me, onto uh, northbound route one. So yeah, it, it does have, it does technically have frontage. Um, yeah, proposed cold storage warehouse. They did previously, uh, process an administrative, um, variance, Ooh. um, it, uh, in July, um, for the, for the setbacks for this structure, um, and getting it, you know, in the position that it's currently, you know, shown in on that along that northern border, um, you know, it, it did a very, you know, good explanation of, you know, exactly what it's storage, and then they'll, uh, you know, process for the shipping and stuff. So, um, the circulation, uh, you know, around that structure was designed mainly, I think, for the delivery trucks and to facilitate their, you know, ease of in, uh, in, uh, ingress and egress, you know, with their shipments. Um, you know, into and then out of the site. Um, if the panel could, you know, provide any any comments or any, um, you know, recommendations towards circulation layout. Um, I mean, Mr. Jones did, you know, he has, you know, provided some very good reasoning, you know, in terms of color palette, you know, materials, you know, you know, chosen, you know, they're looking to be energy efficient, you know, and maintain it's got to stay cold right um you know so um you know but otherwise i mean the character i think of their proposed structures is is, is going to keep in line with you know what they have you know out there currently existing um so so i mean any comments on the orientation layout configuration of what they have proposed um if there are any recommendations for you know maybe any um you know updates or anything streetscape wise um there is i mean a, currently existing sidewalk, you know, that, that runs all along route one and, you know, as well as whiskey bottom road, 
Um, there is wrought iron fence, um, you know, and street trees and stuff provided, you know, along, you know, along that property frontage. Um, and, but also, yeah, any, any recommendations on, you know, materials, mat excuse me, building materials, signage, um, you know, orientation, um, you know, anything that they may not have considered that might, you know, help them, <clears throat> you know, simplify or, you know, provide a more efficient um, use of this, of this facility. Um, so any comments would be greatly appreciated. Well, I'll start. Um, uh, thanks very much. Uh, this is an industrial area, so we take keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> is this similar to the automated parking garages, which are starting to pop up all over the place, where uh, the the uh, product goes in on a conveyor belt and gets taken by a computer pallet to a storage location and then retrieved when it's needed? Yes, sir. Uh, very similar to that, obviously, at a different scale, you know, ice cream pallets versus vehicles. The technology is very similar. Yeah. So, yes, you basically induct the pallets. They each have their own barcode license plate. Computer system does the work with uh, cranes that are in the really cold environment. The technology of the system provides much more technical jobs. So the people that will work here now are not just your standard forklift drivers. There are more technicians. Um, have they'll have computer backgrounds. They'll call an order that will be a mixed. Uh, you know, we want two drumstick pallets. We want fourteen Eskimo pies. Whatever. That'll the computer will then send that all out from the the warehouse. Present it to the people loading trailers. Um, so yeah, very similar technology. Yes, sir. As an old college forklift operator, I protest the elimination of those jobs. But uh, <laughs> uh, and it's also we're not eliminating uh, the jobs. We're actually providing much more technical, uh, higher-paying jobs. No, I, I uh, all kidding aside. Um, one question, uh, Rob, <clears throat> where are you uh, accommodating the stormwater at, since you eliminated the the facility that you had? As a, a good good question. It's been a lot of fun. The um, we're working with uh, two outfits right now. We, we're trying to narrow down who it's going to be, but it's um, it, it's it's basically like a Lego set putting together underground um, uh, Lego components that that store uh, large volumes of water. It's going to be under this trailer storage area here, and uh, all the drainage will be brought now into that facility. It'll be managed under here obviously uh, very efficiently. And then um, the discharge pipe will run uh, behind the behind the uh, cold storage building. That's building 60 feet off that property line. It's such a small scale, it's hard to know that, but it, there's 60 feet back there. We run that discharge line out there and then we uh, discharge it down to the stream, basically at the same location it discharges to that. Okay. Yeah, it actually will probably clean that area up for those that know the backside of this facility. Um, so, just as a point of contention, there might be a little bit cleaner for the operation. Yeah, you know, and, and that's a good point. Thank you, Michael. The 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 so we're providing the same stormwater detention that was previously provided, and on top of that, we're modernizing uh, our, our BMPs to address the ESD environmental site design. And, and actually we've been working with these companies because they haven't had to do this, but they're actually, we're integrating um, things like storm filter, the storm filter product, uh, various outfits. We're integrating their product actually into this, um, in, into this subsurface system so that it runs through the filters, these filtering and filtering devices, and then basically goes out into the rest of the detention facility. Really hasn't been done um, much. Every most of these we've been uh, the the ESD treatments are being done outside of the big detention facility. Here we're actually integrating it into the facility. It's a little bit uh, unique, and we actually have the. Uh, uh, two different companies working together to to be able to to provide that. Okay, I, I have no other questions. Anyone else? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Have you guys looked at any sort of renewable energy for the site, like 
I don't know, photovoltaics or I know that could be pricey, but any any other things, it just seems like a lot of broad expansive areas where you could potentially take advantage of some sort of renewable. Yeah, I'll energy. take that one. Yeah, real quick. So part of the problem with this facility of putting photovoltaics on the roof is then we're drawing energy back to it. So what I would suggest to you, we're going to have um, refrigeration compressors that will have variable frequency drive motors, so they won't be running full speed all day, all the time. Uh, the the actual warehouse is lights out because nobody's working in it. There'll be maintenance lighting when required. Uh, so again, as big as the footprint is of that warehouse, it'll be very efficient on the use of energy as well. The cranes, um, as the cranes are coming down, they they regenerate some power and provide some of their own charging just based on the sheer uh, nature of their movement. So we haven't said we're going to put solar on, but we have looked at other things that are sustainable options. Again, if you read Wall Street, cold storage uh, is a big component of the food chain. Everybody knows that energy is a is a premium and these companies are taking every opportunity to save as much energy as possible in the same footprint to store food for the nation. And, um, you know, just by co locating it with the plant, you're saving on driving fuel correct. That kind of thing. Correct. And the, the demand for for dryers in this marketplace is the reason. So we're actually offsetting some of the storage component that they have currently in this new facility. And really optimizing the distribution of the products. So, yeah, you, can you put that on an electric bill? No, but can you say that there's some efficiency in the improvement of the network? Yes. So, right, we will, you. of course, be in for plan review and all that when the time is right. This is uh, we're in the preliminary design stages, so you, you all will see this again if that's your purview in uh, you know building plan review. Um, so. Just letting you know that. I have another comments. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll go. Uh, so this is Larry Quark. I'm a landscape architect. Um, and there's no um, planting plan or anything to comment on. I mean, I'm happy that the um, forest conservation area um, you know, isn't being touched and, and it can't be touched because um, it's, it's there as a, an easement. And then also the, um, the band of trees that's uh, between the, um, the low building that fronts uh, Route 1 and then what you're building is, is being preserved. But I was wondering whether, um, and I'm not going to propose this as a, um, you know, a motion or anything, but um, it seems like there's an opportunity here. Um, this big um, building is, is basically white panels, did you say, Michael? Uh, but I thought I'd heard you some, say something about gray. No, what I was suggesting to you is that the the cold storage components will be white, and then the the office component there. Um, okay. The geometry may be a little bit subject to change, but we will have architectural features that say, "Hey, I'm front entrance office, front door type stuff that don't have to be in that same vein." Okay. So yeah, it'll have some character to it. You know, with the distribution nature of this, you know, putting a bunch of trees in the parking lot, you know, where they're driving trailers. And trucks, those last about a week and then they get run over. So, sure. you know, not something that you would consider. We're um, fully engaged with Rob on the entire site design. So, what Rob recommends to us, um, you know, from the landscaping perspective that meets the ordinance and your intentions is um, certainly what we're going to provide. So, um, again, a bit early in this stage, as you said, we don't have that information prepared yet. We didn't believe that was the nature of this review, but um, you, your, Whoever has purview over that information as it's permitted will that will be presented properly and uh, meet your standards. Okay, there, I don't know whether it was this project or the one that's coming up next. It mentioned something about the the trees along Route One. Some of them may have died or whatever, but there's a commitment that um, you would replace them. I'm not sure if that's this project or um, the next one, but um, <clears throat> that would be important to to make sure that that we do follow through on that um, to you know give the street trees. Um, you know, the attention they need along Route 1. Sure, I would suggest that's probably the other project, uh, okay. Larry, um, but seems reasonable to me. Okay. And then the final thing is, um, as a landscape architect, I'm certainly I'm interested in the landscape, but also the, 
the appearance and um, any opportunity to kind of create a, a sense of place. And I know this is industrial, but it is 116 feet high. And I think I know your comment on, you know, using any color on the building, but I look at the coastal building that you um, someone had mentioned is right next door and it has the, the blue banding at the top. Um, I don't know, I know about 80% of this is invisible from Route 1 because of the building in front and then the trees. Although in the winter, I was down there just yesterday driving by and I think it will be clearly visible in the winter just because there's no foliage. But I don't know, I was envisioning whether um, or thinking about um, whether it would, might be nice to have a, a banding at the top, say the top 10 feet that's like kind of an icy blue color. And I point to two projects that we have, um, one's in um, <coughs> this county, the other's in Howard. but. They do um, like silhouette type things, very simple graphics. Um, in this case, I, I'm just throwing out ideas. Uh, maybe it's a, a icy blue banding and it has um, the dryer name on it or whatever. And then there's like snow geese, you know, sort of flying in silhouettes or something like that. Uh, we have um, sound barriers up on Route 216 in Howard County that are bland, sort of concrete walls. But yet there's images that are kind of um, just silhouettes of um, waterfowl and things that are, you know, kind of flying. It just makes all the difference in the world. I, I myself like going that way just because I like that, <clears throat> those images, it kind of makes it a special place. So the bottom line is just maybe think about, you know, could you do something at the top that is visible from Route 1 that identifies your, it as a cold storage facility, but then also incorporates some sort of graphics that's, um, you know, typical of what cold storage would be. I mean, it's cold, cold type things, you know, was it icicles or snow geese or um, ice blocks of ice or whatever. But I can tell you that on Long Route 1, it's so um, dreary, you know, on those areas, especially in the winter, that that could become kind of, um, you know, an iconic thing, uh, you know, for people. It's just you got kids in the car and you need to look up and uh, well, there's the, the, the ice plant or whatever. So, again, I just throw those out as ideas because I think we miss a lot of opportunities when um, we don't think creatively and out of the box, even if we're talking about an industrial facility. Um, yeah, I understand. Ahead. Yeah, appreciate the comments there. We've actually, we build all over the country. We do a lot of these facilities and um, required in some locations. So I know exactly what you're speaking of, Larry. You know, some graphics and things that kind of knock the walls down a little bit. And we're still in the throes of design, so we're not there yet. I would suggest to you that um, we're contemplating things like that, some banding to break it up. Okay. Don't have it fully defined yet. So I don't want to be tied to anything, but I will assure you we will be considering everything that you said. Um, cause even the people that operate it say the same thing, you know, we got those big behemoth and want people proud to come to work and things like that. So yeah, right. all good comments. Appreciate that uh, feedback. Thank you. Perfect. So I'll jump in guys. Cause I, I was been thinking the similar lines there, Larry, everybody keeps saying that the, this building is 80% of it obscure, is obscured by, I guess the other building. And I, I'm not seeing that quite considering this building is 116 feet tall and the other building is. A lot less than that. So I, I and I quit. Um, Rob, did you have an you had an elevation? I think, and I don't or a section. I don't know if that was shown from Route One. Hey, Rob, um, do you have the height adjustment document? Because that yeah, had those those other. And views I know we're dealing have. with the grades here. Well, let's see what I can. Find. And you're saying there's a lot of vegetation there, but is the vegetation really that tall? This building's on nearly 120 feet tall. <laughs> yeah, it's also, that's, that's, you know, um, Fred, appreciate the comment. We're what, 600, 700 feet back to you. So that helps. I'm not, di yes. I'm not diminishing your comment yeah. at all. No, and I, and I, you know, when I first knew we were looking at this, I was like, why are we even looking at this project? It's an industrial building. And I know the answer, it's along the Route 1 corridor and that's why right. we're looking at it. Um, yeah, Rob first I don't, mentioned that and we were surprised as well. So, yeah, and, but I, and I can appreciate your, your, your uh, comment, Michael, about the distance from route one. And I, and I don't know that I saw a, a site section um, view angle that was generated, Rob, from route one. That would be interesting to see, well, given all the factors that have been talked about, whether or not you're even ever going to see this building. I don't know, but it, it yeah, is. Pretty yeah, there are actually points, Fred, where you don't see it. It's obscured by others. Um, Rob, if you don't have that, I'll find it real quick off our server at the office. Um, 
but yeah. the height adjustment documents had those extra camera views that Cody did. Yeah, you probably in the, have a, a the photographs, I see it. I'm looking at it. The photograph with the kind of overlay of the height of the building, and then right next to it, there is a 3D perspective taken from the same view. Yeah, but Vivian, those... there was some other stuff that we did for the, the height adjustment. Oh, okay. um, it was a little bit different, but showed the views that Fred and, uh, and Larry are talking about. So, um, Rob, I'll dig for that real quick, um, unless you have it handy. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Hold on. I'm yep. looking through the file right now. Yeah, and I'm going to switch off here for a second, go find that, not leave the meeting, but just turn on my camera and uh, I'll be right back to this. Okay. Um, okay. But I'm listening in um, for certainly any other comments as well. <clears throat> How are you yeah, not... that, Vivian? <laughs> What's that? How are you looking at that? It was in a link. Oh. That... One of the links that they sent out in advance, yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. it's actually yeah. on the website here. Copy. I can put it in the chat. Let's see. Here, I'm going to put it in the chat. There's a link to it. I'm guessing you're driving along Route 1, looking through five or 600 feet of, of woodland. You're not going to see much. Yeah, but I, as um, Fred was saying, I mean, I drove there just um, yesterday or day before. I guess it was day before. And um, that woodland is not very prominent. If I mean, <laughs> I think it's, you know, there's trees there, but I don't think they're like 60 feet high. Yeah. Well, that's, that's oh. what I'm wondering, Larry. I mean, but what you have to do is you have to do what Michael was saying. You have to take a section from the actual uh, elevation of the road, right? And then because of your distance back, project that view angle. I don't know. Will you see the top 20 feet of the building or the top well, and that's, 70 and that's feet? Exactly that's exactly why I was suggesting that just like the coastal building that something be done on the top, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet, um, because you won't see the rest of it, but you certainly could make a statement in a very nice way in an abstract way. Um, and, and like a nice subtle use of color, you know, from the roadway for sure. Yeah. Well, Rob, like Michael said that they, they're dealing with, they don't want to, they don't want any heat gain either. So that's a, a fine line that they have to deal with. I realize that, but then he mentioned that they have done it on um, other jurisdictions have required it. So. Yeah, yeah, we've done yeah. some applique graphics and things. Rob, I just emailed you the elevations we had from the height adjustment. Those kind of show yeah. the views that we're speaking of. And and my only comment was based on, you know, again, back to why are we even looking at this? Because it's in the Route 1 corridor and the, the intent was to make the Route 1 corridor nicer and more appealing. but. Um, I don't even know if it's an impact visually on the Route 1 corridor, I guess is what I'm saying. And if it is, then I kind of agree with Larry. Maybe something could be done to make it a little bit, um, a, a little bit more, uh, you know, than just a, a, a blank white industrial surface sure. building. Um, and that was the intent behind the guidelines for Route 1. Rob, is it feasible for you to share the, the information you sent to DPZ in your application, which showed... It had the axons the and the administrative adjustment. Yeah. Well, but the axons one thing. What 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 no, there was is that they taken were, from he he overlaid what the information he sent to us showed it. the visibility of the okay. one I thought, which is okay. one of the reasons it's here for review. Am exactly. That, Nick? So the, the the one that I had up on the screen. <clears throat> so, or or are you Anthony, are you talking about the one that I had up on the screen? I don't know. I may have missed it. Do you want to reshare it? So there was there was this version where Michael Jones took the the building and kind of superimposed it back here, um, and and different views. So if you were, I'm not seeing your screen, screen yet, Rob. Oh, I'm sorry. And if you need me to put that up on the screen, Rob, I can do it. I've got that file handy real quick. So your call. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So this file should have what we're looking for. If you scroll a page or two in, you'll you'll see that red line. Are you, is that what you're going to see from Route One? 
That yep. red line is what you're going to see. Sorry, I was looking at something else, guys. I was looking on my screen. Let me... Um, yeah. The implication of this line, real quick. right, shows that the red line in the SketchUp model or the, the, the whatever the model program you used on the right-hand side, that red line is replicated on the visual image on the left. So the assumption being that that's what you're seeing from route one. So you're going to see a good 60 feet of that facade, if not more, from route one. The way I read that, that elevation that's called from highway one. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, you know, I agree with Larry then something ought to be you ought to try and do something, whether it's texture, color, um, mural, something. Even you know, even even those metal panels can come in a variety of textures, colors, striations, horizontal, vertical. You know, and and or some some uh, sort of you know beautification to it would really be helpful, considering it's in the Route One corridor. So if I was to click share, would uh, whoever's administering this, does that give me the ability to show my screen real quick? Yeah. Um, let me uh, let me give you the permission here. Just hang on one second, Michael. Okay, if you do, because Rob, I dug the the other the height adjustment file out. I think this will help. Um, not disagreeing with any of the comments, gentlemen, but th this might give you a little bit of better perspective of the building because we've superimposed it. Uh, Mr. Moore, that's on my team, did that for us. And uh, we'll illustrate that. Okay, so let me share real quick. Um, okay, so on the screen now, you will see various views that we took. And I'll point in a minute, gentlemen, um, but just so that you can understand. So we took a view, a couple of views from Whiskey Bottom, a couple of views from the neighborhood, and wanted to kind of show, hey, what does this thing look like in context? If you mess with Google Earth, they've been pretty smart and they've embedded enough of their elevation information in it. So you're you're within a foot or two of really, if you know what you're doing, you can get this thing photo matched up pretty good. So if we start at view number one, we're looking over top of the existing manufacturing facility and we're seeing the building in the back. What that looks like from this point is this little sliver sticking up on the top past the now granted that's a hundred and some feet tall but from where the the view is you can't see it because you've got all of that horizontal distance and the site is actually pitching downward from the existing dock probably 15 to 20 feet so that's helping you on whiskey bottom view two is over kind of at the corner at the traffic light we're kind of looking back you can see a little bit of it now certainly to the gentleman that talked about trees in the winter yeah Agreed, they don't have all the green foliage, but even so, again, we got some distance that's helping us. So that's the sliver of it sticking up above the trees right now. <clears throat> Fortunately, we could only take the views that Google had from a street view. So if we ran up there now, these would look a little different, I agree. And then I got a couple more for you. So we'll see the other vantage points, um, you know, in the, the drive that's kind of adjacent those set of buildings are here. So the one that looked like it was a real big red chunk when we're standing across the street, we see it peek up over here just a little bit. Um, so yeah, it's there, but it's masked with the parts building in front, the brick building. Um, so again, it's helping. And then the driveway that's just to the right of them that where view four was taken, you're looking up and it's barely visible, just kind of sneaking up in the back there. Again, got distance on our, uh, distance on our side here. So that's helping us. Looking north, uh, excuse me, south west it is on route one. So the discharge lane is coming out of the plant and the trucks would turn onto the road here heading right. We silhouetted this where you in the summer, you're never going to see it because it's blocked. But then of course in the winter, it's going to be visible to the degree that the foliage doesn't get you know, maintain itself. And then the last one is just another view from the industry. So it's there. Uh, there's no disagreeing that. I think we've done what we could to position it such that it had the least amount of impact. And gents, we're not opposed to some graphics, on, maybe on the route one side, if you will. Um, I think um, 
you know, the ability for us to do that would certainly be very easy to do and, you know, a good compliment to what you're asking for yeah. uh, compromising the performance of the building. Um, and we can do it as a surface applique rather than something that we've got to penetrate the walls. Again, minus 20 environments are pretty harsh. They're also uh, unforgiving thermally if they have any kind of vapor leaks, um, that becomes a big problem. So, um, we know how to do that. We'll, we'll make some suggestions to your group as we come in for permit, and we can certainly, uh, you know, talk about what we'd like that to look look like for, uh, you know, for your comfort there, and uh, make sure you're happy with what you see. Thanks I'll stop sharing now. Is there any questions about what you're seeing here? Otherwise, I'll I'll give the share back so that. Uh, well, thanks for indulging me, everybody. I I, yeah. I think that answered my questions. Yeah, yeah me too. <clears throat> I don't have anything else, Bob. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Any, any uh, motions? Yeah, I said I wasn't going to make a motion, but um, now that we've had the discussion, um, and uh, Fred and um, Vivian and may be able to tweak it or, but way, the way I'm wording it is that the applicant takes steps to beautify the building facade facing Route One with either texture, graphics, or color. Or color banding on the top of the twenty top twenty feet of the building. I'll second. Yeah, that. and I think we're we're okay with that. Okay. So yeah, no All problem there. For the for the record. Approved. Second. Uh, okay. I. Aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> yes. Anything else? Okay. What do we have next? Okay, thanks for your time, gentlemen. I'm going to peel off, Rob. Thank you all for uh, taking our, our case here and I appreciate we'll be in to work with you as we come in for permit and make sure everyone's uh, got a nice facility in the neighborhood. So thank you. Thank thanks, you. Michael. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, next up. There's part two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, look, it's Rob again. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is this two separate submissions? This is, so look, uh, I, I will explain that briefly. So we have um, the reason it's two separate submissions. So Michael Jones and, and myself and that and the that team, that is, that is um, the cold storage. And that is a separate third party that work working in conjunction with dryers but that is really a, a totally separate animal um, separate team um, everything is is separate on that um, it's almost as if the two um, aren't don't don't relate to each other this one the one the third project tonight this dryers project is actually an expansion physically of this building uh, to increase their actual production or or update their production of 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 their of their uh, production lines it, it it is distinctly different and separate from uh from the uh from that uh, the cold storage building <clears throat> that we just heard about and i just wanted to vivian said one thing and just to kind of round that out and she's absolutely right and michael kind of backed it up the whole purpose of that, you know, we talk about the green aspect of that. The whole purpose of that is to actually reduce trips on the road because right now what they do is they they take those material that that, that product out and they have to cold store it and then repalletize and put it all back together and then go back out on the road again. And so the the whole purpose of this is kind of like a one stop shop that they're doing it all here. And actually, really, in the end, reducing trips. Now, um, that that is that is basically the intent of that. That it's way more efficient to be doing that on site than to be doing taking it off uh, with trips and then repalletizing and sending back out and creating other trips. So it's it really is, um, from what I understand, a um, a reduction in 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 trips on the. Chuck trips on the on the road. So, oh, um, uh, Rob, can I can I interject for a second as well? This is Justin Larkin, head of engineering for dryers. Um, just to add to what Rob is saying, 
uh, a big part of our overall plan for the site and, and for the company as a whole is trying to make our products where we sell them. And so right now we have four manufacturing facilities across the country, two in California, one in Indiana, and then this one here in Laurel, Maryland. Um, when you study the amount of truck trips that take place going across country, a uh, product that's produced in California being sold on the East Coast, um, one of our goals is to optimize our manufacturing footprint in the U.S. to reduce our transportation costs. And so this is a big part of that project. So, you know, by doing this, we will be drastically reducing the amount of uh, over the road travel uh, to get ice cream to the consumers here on the East Coast. So, so uh, just to, for, for, for clarity, Justin uh, Larkin is the um, is with um, dryers. He's uh, so he is 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 a person who is um, involved in this plant. He is a, is he is um, um, and I'm not exactly sure, Justin, what your what your position is. Um, you may want to let them know, but he knows everything that's going on at this plant. He knows all aspects of the of the expansions and of the various projects and how they tie together in, in the uh, uh, overall and in the big picture. So it's good to have Justin on the, on the call. Yep, and, and like Rob mentioned, my, my role in the company, I oversee engineering for, for the US. Uh, so I am overseeing uh, projects that we're doing at all sites, uh, predominantly focused on the East Coast between Indiana and Maryland, but uh, spent quite a bit of time uh, at the Laurel factory, actually lived in Howard County and worked in, in the Laurel factory for about three years. Uh, so very familiar with the area. Currently, I live in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, but travel back and forth. Thank you, Justin. So um, here we are at the dryers again. We, we talked about the location. Um, a few things I'm just going to explain a little bit more about was we you heard me mention about the expansion of the parking. So again, this parking was on that original SDP 0540. It was accounted for in the stormwater management. It was uh, it was designed fully designed at the last minute. It was removed from the plan because it was determined that it wasn't required at that time. This expansion is integral to the building. And um, if you're seeing my cursor, it is uh, it takes up this roughly this. A nook in the building and it pops out into the parking area. So that's this parking will be replaced in part over in, in the area that they didn't need originally. We'll now come back online. Uh, the, it'll be built out for parking lot. Uh, but that um, that is closer um, to Route 1. Uh, we'll go through the images uh, from Route 1. Uh, with the existing landscaping and looking in, into the site. So, so this project again is, is, is located here, uh, integral to the building. It is the expansion of their uh, production lines and uh, this parking lot will be reconfigured. The utilities that are here will be reconfigured to accommodate, uh, to accommodate this, uh, this expansion. Uh, again, uh, this is uh, route, route 1. This is the property as it abuts uh, Route 1. This is the BGE property closer to Whiskey Bottom Road and the substation. And this is in the red outline is the expansion. And, um, and it's about 135 feet from the, from the building uh, out to the edge of the expansion. And you can see in this view, the realignment of the drive aisle to accommodate the this expansion and the completion out of this uh, of this uh, parking area. The nice thing about this parking area from a from a visual perspective from route one and we'll go through the pictures, but it is as you can see by the grades, it is significantly below below route one. So it's kind of tucked in back there. And, and a little bit out of sight. These pictures will kind of bear that out. So picture A is uh, from Route 1, uh, about as far 
uh, south along that, uh, as far north along that frontage. Uh, you could see if somebody on a bike on the sidewalk. Uh, to the left of this picture is is not our property from about the center. You see the fence to the right is, and down below is the uh, parking area. Uh, picture B is moving uh, further south. Again, uh, looking in uh, toward the site, you could see the existing landscaping that was uh, constructed in conjunction with the 05 SDP, and it's starting to grow up a little bit, and it's providing a pretty good um, pretty good buffer. <clears throat> Moving again further south, picture C, kind of doing the same thing. You're looking in toward the site. We're looking uh, through the parking area. Uh, the area where you see some of this equipment is that area that'll be converted uh, from, from a lay down or storage area today to a formal parking lot. And we're looking in toward the building and you're now seeing the existing building in the background there. Uh, picture D is about as close to the the uh, south side uh, property line with BGE. To the right on this picture would be the BGE parcel. You can see in the background you're you're starting to see the the uh, the, the existing uh, the existing building. Picture E is from Whiskey Bottom Road uh, down here. It's looking up the existing driveway uh, toward the um, toward where this expansion would occur. And you could see um, roughly where that, um, where the expansion will be, and, and we'll show more graphics that you'll, you'll see that. So what you're seeing is the edge of the um, existing building, which is, uh, which, is, uh, which is here. So um, moving on a little bit, um, and I'm gonna allow, um, the architect for um, for this project, he works for CME. He is vice president of design. Nathan Moore um, will speak about the uh, the exterior. So this would be the side that we were kind of looking in from Route One, and this would be the expansion side. This would be your your west elevation uh, for Route One. But go, go ahead, um, uh, Nathan. If you're on, could you maybe explain the, the expansion? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, it's a production expansion for dryers. Uh, so they'll be adding some new uh, modernized lines that are more efficient and higher capacity to help meet demand. And basically, it is the same materials as the other building. It's a bright insulated metal panel. We're going with a thicker panel, five inches. Uh, it's over 30, R30 on the walls. We're using uh, a little bit different than the other building because it's the temperature is not as low. It's still a con, uh, cool condition space, so we still use a high, um, high, highly resisted building, and it has a walkable ceiling in it, which also helps. You know, basically that's an insulated metal panel as well, so we have a cooled environment below, interstitial walkable ceiling, and then a white TPO roof as well, um, just to help minimize the loading on the building. And our highest part of the building from grade is going to be about, and we're still going to get final uh, topography and everything from Rob and his team, but we're anticipating about 56 feet above grade, and that's to that very highest center part where the parapet steps up for the roof line because we have a ridge behind that. Um, and then basically the panels will run down to the existing floor level so the building ties into the existing floor level and we'll have some exposed uh, concrete foundation walls and some stairs coming out of some exit doors and that's on the long elevation there and then the elevation just above that is the elevation that will face the street and that um, you'll notice there's some kind of trimmed boxes on that end. Depending on when our tanks arrive, we may have to have some openings in the wall, which would basically be, it'll be the exact same material with some white trim on it. And um, if they arrive in time to be set in the structure first, uh, those won't be cut in unless they ever have to replace a tank uh, or you know install a different tank in the future. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about this building in the sense that it too is a, you know, it's basically blending in. We're trying to match the existing materials of the existing facility that it's attaching to. Um, it's an industrial building. It has a, a lot of 
uh, ammonia racking on the roof um, that kind of spreads out to deliver cooling to a lot of different, um, you know, different units up there that can condition the space. So there's not a lot of roof area. And um, I think if we go to that next sheet, Rob, we can look at how it sort of, you can see on the left there, that's a model that we've done out of our laser scanning. We basically modeled the building from a laser scan that we took and it shows the existing on the left there. And then on the right, you can see when this building is constructed, that will be the, basically the view there. And then down below, just to show you a flat isometric, you know, basically an orthographic view of that elevation. So you can see that the height really ties in with the rest of the facility. This is a view from Whiskey Bottom Road, looking up the existing driveway, looking, looking north. Yeah. And I, and one other thing, Nathan, if you could um, just confirm that the, the building addition height and the existing building are very similar. They're, they're very that's similar. correct. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of, that's why if you uh, look at these orthographics, you can see you know, it flattens everything out so you can see the existing structure and our structure kind of all blending together there. Um, on this view, you can see from, we basically used um, Google Earth and modeled in the positioning of these and our laser scan data. Uh, so these are uh, highly accurate positioning models. We took out some of the trailers just so you could actually kind of see the building in the background. So there's actually, obviously, from you can see from the photographs that they took on site, there's a lot more foliage between these, but in the wintertime, it would look more like this. So right now there's some existing tanks on that left view. If you look outside there, um, the last edition, they were going to have those tanks be exposed to the exterior. And when we are proposing this, we're actually doing an indoor tank farm at the south and basically having a, a clean wall along that edge. And when you get to the lower view again, that just sort of shows that orthographic projection of how it fits in with the other buildings, heights, and um, overall massing. And that's about all we have. Okay, Nick, do you have any staff report comments? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, this is the, uh, you know, as the, uh, you know, as Rob and <clears throat> Mr. Moore explained, you know, this is you know, the second separate, you know, um, dryers ice cream um, expansion, a sec second project, as it were. Um, this, uh, this, this specific project uh, does, you know, have, you know, you know, a, a strong presence on Route One. Um, you know, the addition is, I mean, it's front and center. That the parking lot, um, you know, shown here in, in the expansion, um, that was included, like like Rob said, what was included on uh, STP um, 0540, but just was never constructed. You know, um, I mean, it's 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 right up on you know the roadway for the most part. <clears throat> um, the, um, you know, as, as, as they mentioned, they're going to try and get the architectural, you know, to match the existing character, you know, color wise, you know, and, you know, feel of the building. Um, but given that it does have, um, you know, that, that strong route one presence, um, you know, if any recommendations, you know, on. The streetscape improvements, maybe landscaping improvements, um, you know, screening. There, there is existing, you know, vegetation and stuff out there right now. There are street trees, you know, along Route One, and, you know, landscape plantings. Um, it was proposed, um, you know, with this, you know, with this project that, um, you know, the missing and dead landscaping, you know, that was, you, know, shown on this SDP. Um, but not, you know, it's, it's not there today with that. It would be replaced and, you know, refurbished, but, um. If there are any, you know, additional sort of proposals, maybe considerations to make, um, you know, to help with this, you know, frontage, um, we'd be, we'd be great, you know, greatly appreciative. I you know, I realize given that it is, you know, sort of in, in addition, that we are confined by the constraints of the existing structure and stuff. So, I mean, we can orientation and layout, you know, is kind of like a, is, is off the table, but, um, you know, additional edge treatments and stuff like, you know, comments for 
interest and stuff like that would be greatly appreciative. Okay, I have a a, a question. Uh, the entrance off Whiskey Bottom Road is that where all the trucks are coming in that service the new warehouse? Uh, no, the trucks that go to the warehouse actually use the entrance to the um, east. Yeah, it's not. It's quite a little bit off screen there. Um, this is actually for the the employee entry and exit. Yep, there you go. That's that's where the warehouse traffic goes. That wasn't clear, in the, but that that's good. Um, yeah. I'm sure that the uh, the landscape along, if it isn't, it should be, but I'm sure that the landscape along Route 1 is following the guidelines. But I think as you uh, refurbish this parking lot, as I look at it now in this aerial, you're showing a lot of new islands, and I would suggest you put shade trees in all of those islands. And if you do that, we probably won't ever see this building. Not that it isn't a wonderful building, but... Yeah, Bob. This is this is Rob. I I what we what we what we will probably do. You saw on the one graphic we had was actually that was the original uh, approved landscape plan with with the O five SDP. We'll we'll go out. We're gonna as part of this project. We're gonna verify that all plannings are alive and there. If they're not, we're going to include them as new new plantings. And in addition. Uh, we will plant um, as many of these islands as we can. Uh, we have to be a little bit uh, careful with the islands that that are going to get uh, some parking lot lighting. Okay, I think that I think that's good. Uh, you have a uh, you show some existing islands there too, which don't show up in the aerial photograph. Um, if they do, they're not planted, so they don't jump out. But I would suggest that those get planted also. Uh, anyone else have any comments? Fred? I don't have any comments now. Anybody else? Well, I, I'll speak up again only because of the graphic idea that we had on the other building. It seems to me that this building also could um, coordinate some sort of color banding graphic package with the other building. I mean, if you're trying to make it look like one complex, um, I'm not sure what that graphic would be, but um, if the other applicant is is willing to explore that, it seems to be that this building being 60 feet high um, still could um, benefit from some sort of um, sort of cap um, wall at the, at the top that has some sort of graphics um, um, incorporated into it, um, whether it's a color or, um, you know, some sort of um, um, silhouettes or, or whatever. But um, again, I, I just think um, trying to tie this whole complex together with some sort of graphic package on what are just basically blank white walls would be um, worthwhile. I was going to say the same thing. Would you like to make a motion to that effect, Larry? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that the applicant coordinate a graphics slash color banding um, design project with the cold storage building so that um, there will be an attempt to tie the uh, design together between this addition as well as the, the new proposed cold storage facility. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Um, I'd like to make a motion that uh, all of the islands which can accommodate shade trees should be planted with shade trees in both the new and the existing parking lot. I'll second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes. <clears throat> Any other motions? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we're finished. Thank you. Thank you for putting up with me for two hours. <laughs> 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 Only if we get free ice cream. Rob, we feel like hey, we're good question, Vivian. Cream. What what retail <laughs> brands? What retail brands does Dryer produce? Or are there? So we produce dryers produces uh, dryers and Edie's ice cream. So on the East Coast, it's Edie's okay. uh, packaged ice cream. On the West Coast, it's dryers, but they're the same. Okay. Uh, we also produce Hagen Doss. Uh, so the the primarily at the Laurel facility, they do Hagen Doss bars, 
So okay. and then they also produce uh, Hagen Dazs pints and quartz. Um, Interesting. And then Alpshine is another big brand and a huge brand for the Laurel facility. So currently they have five lines uh, producing Alpshine bars, which are the the frozen fruit bars. Mm -hmm. uh, and then last <laughs> we do we have a co-branded uh, license with Oreo. So you'll find in the grocery store a lot of Oreo ice cream novelties as well as canned products um highly recommend them they're very very good uh, yeah you got me salivating already i feel like i'm gonna <laughs> sign i know i think i'm gonna go to the freezer see if we have any <laughs> yeah and, and then probably the last one and one of the bigger names is is drumstick as well we we oh. do drumsticks yeah uh, in, in many different shapes and sizes but i have some waiting for me so let's let's end this <laughs> good yes we Thank have you. one more. We have one more item with the DAT panel before okay. you guys head off. Okay. We do have to approve the uh, calendar. Thanks, everyone. Wait, wait, Bob, 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 wait. No, I know. I'm waiting. I'm thanking all the oh. presenters. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> thought you were off to your freezer to get the right. <laughs> presenters, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you for you. thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Dylan. Nick, can Bye. you pull up the schedule? For approval for the for next for this current year's meeting. Just give me one uh, second. I have no problems with the schedule. If everyone would like to approve, uh, uh, say aye. 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 Yeah, I think aye. I think you sent it out a few weeks ago, and we all yeah so we all on. we all approved it. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to confirm that everyone had seen it. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. There we have any changes. Perfect. That's all we had. There was a misprint on the um, agenda about uh, officers. I don't think we need to do that this this year. We're set for this year. And then I, I saw um, an announcement like through the county publications or whatever that they are looking to fill a, a couple positions. Um, I don't know if you've gotten any applicants in or not yet, but. Yep, we uh, finally, we finally got it posted. <laughs> um, so they are currently collecting any applications and they'll send them to us for review. Uh, and uh, we'll see where we go next. So, Anthony, I, I am on. I'm on borrowed time, right? You're good, I think. Um, I thought I was done, and I was just hanging in there until you got somebody. No, I. I mean, we need to confirm because your appointment came in right before the the law change to, um, to shorter time frames. So your appointment, I think, came in under a five year term. Oh. But, uh, well, actually, to get I, thought oh, he was, I, I think he's appointed for life, right? I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, right. Have your FDR. Uh, I'm 75 years old, so uh, that won't be much longer. I don't know. Ruth gave Ginsburg. She was there until 87. So. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're working through new uh, trying to find uh, new panel members to add to the group, uh, and we'll be able to hopefully organize them all out. Uh, uh, with different timelines, so okay. more to come on that. But yes, the the announcements did go out. Okay, well, I'll hang it until you replace me. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a there's a couple projects for February eighth. I understand. Yes. Um. So that's actually going out tomorrow. Um. There's there's two. Uh. One is uh Bursa Road ninety one thirty Bursa Road. It's a small church. <clears throat> um. In Columbia, and then the other is. Uh, bark social, which is the dog park and, you know, bar cafe. Um, and that's going just south of Meriwether post. Oh, okay. So, um, we'll have those, I'll have those materials and stuff going out the, um, the agenda and stuff. It's all been finalized. So I'll, you guys will be getting an email from me tomorrow. I try and my uh, dog. I'll bring my dog to that one. Yeah. We'll bring our dog. <laughs> yeah. We should have the meeting there. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right everybody. Uh, let's adjourn. Everyone in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're out Good of night. here. Good night. Good night, Good night thank everybody. you.